Mon amis, how are you? I find myself here with my French bread, and I find also that I am trapped inside of some indeterminate form. I cannot seem to get my way out. I need to find a way to figure out what is this indeterminate. But that is okay, because we have a good friend, Le Hopital. Ah, oh, Le Hopital, mon ami. Oh, and that will help us find out what is the indeterminate, what it should be. Well, let us begin. All right. So we've talked about indeterminate forms before. Now, indeterminate just means we don't know. It can't be determined. Not determined. What it means is that some expression which just that by itself is not enough to determine what it is. Now, the classic form is 0 over 0. And we spend some time saying, well, what is 0 over 0? And the answer is, it can be anything. And that's why it's indeterminate. It's this ambiguous thing. There's also, of course, infinity over infinity. And we've dealt with ways to deal with these expressions, 0 over 0, infinity over infinity. It wasn't easy. And uh, certainly were a lot of things we couldn't do before. Now, these aren't the only indeterminate forms. We might also have things like infinity minus infinity, or zero times infinity, or zero to the zero, or one to the infinity. All of these are expressions which, in and of themselves, we are not able to answer what it should be with just that expression. So, what do we need to do? Well, we need to figure out what should they be, and the way we, we figure that out is use limits. All right, so our goal is to go back and say, let's figure out what these are by the use of limits. Now, you might say, well, what, what's new? Well, what's new is we have some better tools. And those tools are derivatives. And we can use those tools to come up with some really great stuff. And in particular, we have something new called Le Hopital's formula. Ah, Le Hopital. <laughs> I like to do that when I think of L'Hopital, channel my inner French. Of course, to be fair, L'Hopital didn't come up with this, but uh, as with many things in history, uh, the wrong people get the credit. So what does it say? It's really kind of nice. Well, our goal is, let's look at the conclusion first, is if we have an expression on the form f of x over g of x, and we're trying to figure out what that is, you can say, look, instead of trying to figure out what that is, Take a look at the limit of the derivative of f over the derivative of g. In other words, we're going to take one limit and transform it to another limit. Now you might say, but why? Well, the reason is sometimes what happens is when you take derivatives, things simplify. Expressions become easier to work with. And things which were indeterminate all of a sudden may no longer be indeterminate. Okay, so now we know the conclusion. It says the function over function, if that goes to something like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, take a look at derivative over derivative. Okay, so what are the rules? They have to be things we can take derivatives of. Well, that's no surprise because we're taking derivatives. Okay. It has to be indeterminate. So in other words, it has to go to 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. All right. Well, that makes sense because we're, if we knew what it was, we wouldn't do anything. So it has to be something that we don't know what it is. Okay, and the last thing, and this is sometimes we don't mention, is that the limit, this new limit, has to exist. So if the new limit exists, life is good. Now, if the new limit doesn't exist, what it means is we can't apply the Hopital's formula, and we have to look for another way. Don't give up hope. There are oftentimes other ways, and so we just have to be patient. All right, so that's the idea. All right, now. One word of warning. Oftentimes when people think of, oh, I'm taking the derivative, they say, oh, it's f over g, I should take a quotient rule. Because that's how you take a derivative of a function over a function, is, is use the quotient rule. But that is not what is required. In fact, it's very much not what you want to do. Quotient rules tend to make things more complicated. Remember, it's the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. It's not the same as taking the derivative of the whole expression. Okay, good. Remember that, remember that. Now, why is this true? Well, we're not going to give a, a complete explanation. We'll give a little bit of a hand-wavy explanation here as to why it might seem reasonable. And uh, you can find there are lots of wonderful proofs 
out there. And so you can look them up on your own time. But here's sort of one way to think about it. Let's suppose that f of x over g of x, we're going to go to something like the form 0 over 0. And of course, where our functions are nice. Now, what does that say? Well, one of the things it says is it says the following. Really, we have that f of a equals 0, and we have that g of a equals 0. That's why it's going to 0 over 0. OK, well, how does that help us? Well, let's think to tangent lines. So if we think about at x equals a, we can say the function f of x looks like its tangent line, which is f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And the same thing, g of x, it's approximately, well, g of a plus g prime of a times x minus a. So, so I'm just saying that the function looks like it's tangent line for f, and the function looks like it's tangent line for g. And now we say, hey, wait, wait, wait. f of a and g of a are 0. So these pieces, f of a and g of a, are 0. All right. Well, that means we can sort of ignore them. And we say, OK, well, if I'm looking at f of x over g of x, that looks like f prime of a times x minus a over g prime of a times x minus a. And the x minus a's cancel. And therefore, it looks an awful lot like f prime of a over g prime of a, which is what we would expect from here. All right. So like I said, that's the hand wavy argument. There's a little bit of subtlety that goes into the general argument, but uh, we'll skip that for now. Because for now, let's get our intuition and let's get our understanding first. And then we can go into the finer details later on. Now, before we begin our practice, we should talk about a few more notes. Sometimes it might be the case that after you apply L'Hopital once, it's not enough because what you have is something which is still indeterminate. So what do you do? Well, there's a couple things. You can keep applying L'Hopital, two, three, four, however many times you need, and you can keep doing that. Now, it's possible that if you keep applying L'Hopital over and over and over again, that you'll get into some vicious cycle and you'll never escape. Don't get stuck in cycles. If you see that happening, say, okay, well, let me go back and let me try something else. One thing to remember is that L'Hopital is not the last word on the subject. There are lots of ways to handle limits, and we've done that before. Sometimes there are better ways to do limits than to apply L'Hopital. So don't get you know, distracted by our new shiny toy. Let's make sure we do things in the smart way. All right. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that We've talked about many indeterminate forms. See, we've talked about 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. But what about other indeterminate forms? And the answer is, if we want to apply Le Hopital, we must get it to the form of a fraction. So how do we do that? Well, there's all sorts of ways. So for example, infinity minus infinity. Well, maybe it's two fractions being subtracted. Combine the fractions. Or we can use conjugation. Conjugation can turn a difference into a fraction. So what we're looking for is we're trying to say, if I have something indeterminate, let us put it into the right form for which we can use Le Hopital. All right. Now, one of the fun things we can do is there's this beautiful fact. It says, if you have a function which is continuous, you can push a limit inside. All right. Well, how does that help us? Well, so... The, so this is the idea. If f is continuous, I can put the limit on the inside. Why is that true, by the way? It's because continuous functions have no surprises. So whatever the inside is going to, whatever the value of the function is at that point, is the same thing as you say, OK, you know, just plug in whatever the inside goes to, and that's the answer. So the main way we're going to use this is oftentimes if we have something on the form a limit as x approaches a, of a function f of x to a function. So in other words, both the downstairs and the upstairs are changing. All right, so if that's the case, both upstairs and downstairs are changing, uh, what do we do? Because it's not a fraction. Well, there's a way to take something from the top and to pull it down. And the way we do it is to use natural logs. Now, there's sort of two things we can do. And what I like to do is I like to say, well, suppose this is what we're looking for, 
let's call it L. L because we're doing a limit. Then the natural log of L, that's the natural log of the limit as x approaches a of f of x to the g of x. All right, so I haven't really done much. I've taken the log of both sides. Now here's where we say, aha, the log is a nice function. It's a continuous function. And therefore, we can push the log past the limit. So what's the idea here? Well, the idea is we're going to swap the log and the limit. And so what we get is that this is really the limit as x approaches a of the natural log of f of x to the g of x, which is the limit as x approaches a of g of x times the natural log of f of x. All right, good. Now, what do we have? Well, what we've done is we've transformed our indeterminate form. All right, well, so suppose that f of x was going to 1 and g of x were going to infinity. Okay, we can, we can suppose that. That's certainly something that's possible. All right, now what happens? Well, g of x is still going to infinity. And now log of f of x, log of 1, is 0. It's an infinity times a 0, which means we've transformed it into a slightly different indeterminate form. But it's an indeterminate form which is closer to a fraction. So maybe we can move the g of x, for example, downstairs. One of the things that you might encounter is sometimes when you say, ah, I have an indeterminate form, and I have to transform it into another indeterminate form, think about the manipulations. And sometimes you may have choices. The rule of thumb is always try to choose the thing which is easiest to work on. It's a good rule of thumb, not just for math, but also for life. Ah, oh, life, it is so beautiful. All right, my friends, mon amis, let us begin some practice using Leopita. Ah, Leopita. Oh, oh, oh.